welcome to the next lecture of my course data analysis for beginners and in this lecture I want to uh, show you some of these important techniques based on which you analyze the data so how do we analyze data so far we have looked at what is data where data is present how it is getting collected and you know situations like those now we want to look at how do we analyze the data all right so in this video uh, first is uh, analyzing data comes under the different statistics stream right so you have various statistical sections or i would say streams in which it uh, it gets captured for example you have descriptive uh, statistics you have basically predictive analytics and uh, scenarios like those within the uh, within the statistics so first thing first is aggregation of data what do you mean by aggregate for example if let's say you are you know a group of different people then you have like individuals but a group of people is nothing but let's say five people or six people that means you have counted those people so that is nothing but aggregation right similarly in aggregation you have different methods like sum average median maximum or minimum so you would do some in scenarios like for example if you are someone who is uh, who watches cricket football baseball you know those type of uh, cricket scenarios you will see that the runs or the goals are being summed right first goal second goal third goal so it's basically 1 plus 1 plus 1 is basically your third goal or the number of runs that are being made is nothing but the sum right so that is what the sum is uh, when you apply it and we use different uh, tools for example Microsoft Excel, Tableau, Power BI or number of various tools to basically apply this aggregation. Next is average. For example, the average number of runs batter has made, right? Either in a cricket match or let's say in, these, in, in the current season or let's say over a period of lifetime. That gives an idea that if a batter is scoring let's say 40 run on an average uh, in the current season that means whether it's in a good direction or bad direction depends on that situation right or comparison. But this is one of the scenario of average. For another example I will give you from the business is average quantity purchased by each customer right. So that becomes a scenario of using the average. Now median, median is also one is nothing but average but median basically helps us to remove the extreme situation for example if you think about it again going back to the sports uh, math, uh, stores, uh, sports terminologies that in cricket you basically make a lot of run so suppose you have so in cricket you have 11 uh, players or batters out of 11 only one has made 200 runs rest other have made let's say 50 runs that becomes that 200 number 200 becomes an outlier right because if you do an average you will see that on an average how each player has made but that's not true only 200 runs have been made by one player that is an outlier and that's where median basically helps that it removes the outlier but tells you okay on an average every other individual have made around 8 to 10 runs or anywhere between 5 to 10 runs like 6 runs each player have made 5 or 6 runs right and that is what uh, median basically does maximum and minimum for example uh, in in your school time or in your college you always want to know the num person who have got the maximum number or the minimum number same thing happen in business you want to know customer who have purchased the maximum number of quantity or you know uh, those uh, the, you know incidents let's say a server or a process which has less number of incident that means minimum number of incidents so by applying this methodology so that is something what we have as a first uh, part of aggregation of data by looking at it various different techniques now let's look at the second one which is plotting the data very very important why because in a data set the data that you are having you can have 100 rows, 1000 rows, 10,000 rows, 100,000 rows, 1 million rows, right? But with the plotting, you aggregate all of that or you basically convert 
each row into some sort of a plot that basically helps you uh, interpret and analyze the data. You cannot read 1 million rhymes in 5 seconds, but with the help of plot, you can do that. Okay, so what, what are the different plots that we have? For example, we have bar chart. For ex uh, bar chart example can be, let's say you have three different products in a company and you want to analyze the sales. So what you do in on X axis, you take products on Y axis, you take sales. So first, second and third, like three different product sales and clearly identify which one is higher or lower. Pie chart is something where you will have the contribution. Each product category is making contribution though this is of a size of a pie or a circle and pie is got broken down based on the contribution percentages. Line chart is nothing but the trend. Each product over a period of time, how much sales they have generated. So that becomes your line chart. So depends on even if you have millions of rows of each product and sales by month and whatever, you will be able to plot it and interpret it in a couple of seconds. So that is the power of plotting data. Now let's look at another technique which is applying the statistical approaches. This is to really understand what's going on with the data. So what do we have over here is Pareto analysis, correlation, variance, probability, hypothesis testing. Okay, starting with the Pareto analysis, very, very impactful. Reason for this, it tries to identify what are those 20% of the scenarios which is impacting 80% or you can also do a vice versa. What is those 80% of the scenarios that is the uh, making the impact? I'll give you an example. Suppose you are a company in which you have lots of customer, but uh, let's say you have 1000 customer just for the sake of count. But if only five customer is making 80% of the revenue, that means you have a revenue concentration mix issue. Why? Because if any of the one customer, uh, you know, decided to move out and go to the competitor, your revenue will bring down drastically. So this is a risk that you are having. So Pareto principle is, you know, uh, it's, it's always called 80-20 principle. 80% uh, is of the reason is because those 20%, 80% of those things because of those 20% uh, of these reasons. Now let's talk about the correlation. Correlation happens because there is a relation between two categories and this relation is natural. For example, let's say you are, you are a student and you are getting certain percentage of mark. Now you want to basically get more marks. So what do you do? You can do one of the two things either you can increase the number of hours and let's say your marks increase little bit more or you you uh, decided to study smarter and your marks have become uh, you know you have got better percentages so there is a correlation in that right similarly if an employee right who is expected to do at least eight number of hours but doing a work of only let's say three or four hours of work obviously work will not be completed so you will find that there is a correlation that the number of hours uh, 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 employee is putting in is resulting into the completion of work or not. So these type of scenarios keeps happening in the business. Similarly, scenarios like, you know, the profit that you are making or the losses that you are making is related to what and that becomes the story. You are trying to find that another basically category because of which the impact is happening. So correlation really helps us. It helps you quantify whether there is any relation or not. If there is a relation, you can show it and make some conclusion. Variance is the opposite of correlation. Correlation is like coming together. Variance is like going far. So you, in, in a way, you are trying to identify why the variance is high in the business. For example, if you are an education uh, you know, company, you may want to know that based on the study program that you offer, does the student get good consistent number of marks or there is a variance in the number, right? So you may want to understand why the variance is there and what you can do to reduce the variance and make a good consistent numbers uh, based on who is taking the study program. For example, you are someone who is 
basically preparing the student for competition competitions and you would always want that all of your students should be selected may or may not be the scenario if it is really not the scenario and there is a fluctuation that means there is a variance you want to understand this you can quantify it using the variance once you collect the data and then improve the results based on the action you want to take probability very um, you know a topic that you start using it at a very early stage of your uh, at the very early stage of your age for example even if you are 10 year old you look up in the sky and you say hey today it will not going to rain or if there are clouds you will say probably it will going to rain so you are doing nothing but you are using probability right so that way probability is everywhere government will do the work probably yes probably no right depends on how important that territory is or whether elections are near or not similarly you know there are many other scenarios related to the probability which basically helps us find the root cause or a probable scenario and then we can quantify as well as to how strong the probability or weak the probability is right then we have hypothesis testing is also one of those scenarios which you start using it unknowingly but with the help of hypothesis testing uh, statistic formula you can quantify it what do i mean by that is i hypothesize about uh, india will going to win the match right against australia let's say so that is my hypothesis but looking at past five scenarios i have seen that okay maybe three matches australia has won two india has won so either i am betting more or i am i am basically creating my hypothesis more on that india will going to even the record or you know if australia again wins which can see which we can see it from their historical trend so that is our hypothesis testing as to what hypothesis we are forming is good enough or not based on that data right so that is one scenario another scenario hypothesis testing is whether the new product that we are launching will going to be successful or not one person will say it will not be successful another person will say it will be successful okay let's go ahead and test it by capturing some data so that is nothing but your hypothesis testing to make sure you have statistical significant result to remove your human bias okay so that is this the last one i have for you is the predictive analytics very very important these days you keep hearing the data science word that is your ultimate aim if once you uh, if you have uh, already pa- if you are passing the data analysis the data predictive analytics uh, is basically the next step to become a data scientist right so what happens over there these are some of the very basic techniques like linear prediction logistic project predictions and segmentation for example linear prediction i am having basically multiple factors for example these are the number of employees these are the locations and this much is the sales so i have two variable and one prediction variable sales and i want to say that based on the number of people i have and number of uh, sales territory i have what is my sales i keep collecting the data and then i fit it in a model and say okay if i increase my number of people will it result into increase of sales or not if i can then how much so quantify that right so that is your linear prediction logistic prediction is very interesting <clears throat> this is about true or false right so it's a binary basically prediction something will happen or not for example customer who is purchasing a credit card will do the fraud or not right insurance policy holder will <clears throat> going to die or not or will do the fraud or not those type of predictions happens and finally the segmentation segmentation is also one of the things which we have started doing from early stages for example whenever we uh, we are drying our clothes in a dryer or outside of the house we bring back we fold them together and we put it by segmenting it like for example t-shirts are going at the t-shirt place we are keeping together the t-shirts we are keeping together the jeans shorts at one so what we are doing we are creating these segments so that is what the segmentation is you try to identify customers let's say 
who have who are showing similar uh, his similar characteristic and you segment them into three or four categories <clears throat> generally in a company what you have is the enterprise as a segment commercial as a segment strategic as a segment so that you know which customer is of higher importance which customer is of lower importance right so that is nothing but segmentation so that you can serve each category and with the number of resources that you have because everyone has limited resource and you want to maximize your profitability so segmentation becomes really really important so this is basically the four different techniques what i wanted to show you uh, based on which you are going to analyze the data and this is just scratching the surface a lot of thing happens over here but you would see that 99% of the time you will be engaging into one of these techniques over here obviously you will become more and more advanced then you will use more predictive analytics more statistical approaches but in my career if you are a data analyst 99% of the time you will see that you will be using this so that is what i wanted to show you let me know uh, if you have any question and i will help you answer that with that thank you so much i'll meet you in the next video